Right, um, hello, uh, today I am just going to sort of talk about maybe holding meetings. Um, so yes, uh, first, uh, what I've got at, uh, example is sort of an example of a minute sheet, and I will sort of talk about that maybe, um, in a bit. The first sort of bit I want to discuss is sort of what you need to sort of hold a meeting. It's always good to have a nice little venue um, to hold it in, um, so you might, uh, but it depends on the size and the scale of the meeting. Um, so for example, if it's just you and a, a few friends, um, you could do it in your house, um, or if it's just a sort of small meeting between uh, interested people, uh, yeah, um, like maybe a cafe or anything, a corner in a cafe. If it's going to be a big open meeting, you might want to get a more sort of, um, uh, like, formal venue. That doesn't have to be anything too fancy. That could just maybe be asking a cafe if you could have a room privately. Some, uh, it depends where you are always. Uh, there's a lot of places that will do venues and a lot of community places will have rooms for cheap, uh, well, relatively cheap compared to more professional sort of business venues. So that's always a good place to start. But I know that um, a lot of cafes will um, sort of let you have a room if they think they'll be that you'll be bringing a lot of people. And if, like, uh, you make it clear that everyone should be um, bringing, uh, buying from that cafe or um, should at least be bringing donations to... Um, sort of give as a nice little thank you. And that also, of course, applies for many other um, community places. If it's more secure, uh, like the meeting, like you're discussing things that you n wouldn't necessarily want, let's say, uh, other people to be aware that you're discussing, certain other people to be aware that you're discussing, um, it's good to have a neutral location, uh, but not one that would require. So if you can sort of get a room, a private room in a neutral location with no questions asked, that's a good idea. But also, uh, depending on where you are, maybe just a private spot in a public park out of the way of people or anywhere thing. Like I said, be flexible and adapt to your needs. Um, yes, uh, it's always important to also take into consideration, like for ex especially with big sort of open meetings, accessibility. So make sure that your venue has disabled toilets and disabled access. That's always a good thing to make sure. And you want to maybe avoid places that could sort of exclude people. Like examples of this is that many people have un like uncomfortable feelings in regards to churches and um, certain other locations. So if you want to be inclusive, you should probably avoid having your meetings in these types of locations. Um, it's always important also before a meeting to start an agenda, uh, for, have an agenda for that meeting, and you want to ensure that the discussion result, re revolves around that agenda. If things come up in the discussion, um, it, and people seem to be interested, it might be a good idea to sort of um, discuss, like, if you have the time to say, okay, do you want to start discussing this and make sure that you have sort of a, um, a general sort of consensus from the group for doing that. Um, but if not, there's a thing that like, you might want to sort of say, okay, we'll write it down as an action point, we'll discuss those later, um, that uh, as an action point, um, that will, uh, you'll put that on the agenda of the next meeting. Um, yeah, always, and it's good practice to sort of have planned in the agenda, um, sort of, uh, maybe, a particularly, it's more so important if it's long meetings with large numbers of people, but sort of breaks and social activities, so like maybe, uh, like have some fun little, social game you can play like um uh yeah there's plenty of examples but it's nice to break things up um 
And then also it might be a good idea, especially with open meetings or if there's any meeting where um, uh, people, um, uh, yeah, m might not um, sort of uh, feel comfortable or not, not what am I saying, where people may be new to the group, um, it's good to sort of start it with maybe an introduction. So sort of these are always kind of good, like maybe have a circle and people... Um, you can ask a variety of things, like maybe everyone, it's always a good idea to maybe get names um, and pronouns. Uh, it's important to make it clear that uh, the degree of sort of secrecy that you want for the group. So like make it clear that everyone knows that it might be everyone, anything in this group that's discussed in this group stays in this group. Or it might be um, anything that's discussed in this group. You can't discuss what people say, you, but you can discuss what has been said. So, for example, you could say, oh, yes, um, uh, maybe um, you, you wouldn't be able to say Dave said such and such. But you might want be able to say that in the meeting um, such and such was said. But the different levels of secrecy and uh, confidentiality is probably the better word. Um, will be dependent upon um, your group and its needs. And it's always a good idea to have this sort of decided beforehand. And uh, yes. Um, in the group, your sort of the two main roles will be sort of uh, that, that won't, aside from just attendees, will be the facilitator and the minute taker. And I'd recommend personally that these roles are frequently rotated. It might be a good idea maybe to have multiple facilitators in particularly large meetings, and then that way you could also have more experienced facilitators help to sort of support and, um, uh, yes, just support newer facilitators. And it might be a good idea to sort of uh, have maybe other Sometimes other roles are required as well. Like, for example, um, a facilitator might require, uh, require someone to keep track of who's putting their hands up when. Um, some other things that you'll need for a meeting and um, that can be useful is, of course, um, pens, papers and everything that you think you might need. Like a nice sort of whiteboard or poster that you can put up and write ideas and sort of show what's going on is always handy and anything like you might need specifically like for example if you had like the idea for a nice little dice game uh, bring dice obviously and just bring what you need um if it's going to be a long meeting it can be a good idea to sort of invite people to um bring food or drinks to share um if you're getting a venue it's probably better t if you uh if you're sort of getting this venue out of someone's goodwill of course it's always better to sort of be supportive of that venue uh, to keep up good relations so you can know that you'll be allowed to do it in the future and sort of um, encourage people during breaks to um, get a, like a cup of coffee maybe from the cafe or whatever. Um, yeah and always try to make sure that your meeting is welcoming and make sure people know that they have the option to take a break and to step back and that no judgment will be placed on them. Other things you can kind of do to make it more sort of a friendly environment is one thing I've seen being used to good effect is sort of when you're doing introductions or talking about things is to sort of maybe use the silly questions. You might ask, um, for example, everyone's, uh, what's, uh, what is your favorite um, uh, um, piece of cutlery or just any, any random nonsense off the top of your head um, and then that tends to work. Another thing that can be useful are hand signals. There's different hand signals uh, used in a variety of group and you can find them fairly easily just sort of by searching for hand signals. So an um, example would be like I know that um, the Extinction Rebellion groups in um, the uh, the um, UK, they uh, like have a thing where, like, if you raise one hand with the uh, an erect finger, uh, that means that you have a point to make. But if you raise two hands with uh, two two separate hands with two separate um, erect fingers, that means you have a direct point, which would be a direct sort of 
response to what has just been said. And then you could sort of wave hands to show that if you agree with, uh, wave your hands with your fingers pointing upwards to indicate agreement and uh, uh, wave your hands to sort of, uh, with your fingers pointing downwards to integrate disagreements and then maybe have a, a, a like make a t-shape with your hands for a technical point. These are just examples and there's probably different systems of hand signals but the advantages of hand signals are that sort of for example with the waving your hands with your fingers upwards to indicate agreement that makes it so people don't feel like they need to sort of really it allows for a sort of um, the general vibe of the group to be taking things that uh, to taken into account so that way um, that might be noted in the minutes or um, it also might be useful then because you don't run into the issue of time being taken up by people sort of just stating that they agree with a point. Um, and then uh, when you have like direct points uh, opposed to just a regular points with just like one symbol for raising your hand you have the two. The advantage of that is that it then allows like maybe the facilitator to know oh we should probably um, let the direct point be made first and then just the more general point to make sure that the discussion is sort of fully explored and that direct point will remain relevant. Um, so I think that's what I've sort of discussed for sort of meetings in general. Uh, yeah, the one other thing I'd add is maybe I mentioned that vibes thing that I mentioned like someone to keep, keep track of hands, but another thing that can help the facilitator a lot is a vibe checker so this can be useful if it's maybe like I said a particularly large meeting or if it's a meeting that's lasting a long time or if it's a meeting that maybe undergoes difficult subjects it's a good idea to have like someone who's just whose main sort of role is uh, make, checking the vibe of the room so that just mainly means if, you, if it seems that people are getting um, frustrated or if people are getting bored or getting tired it, uh, they might sort of note this to the facilitator and the facilitator might then decide um, okay this might be a good time just have a break or um, it might be a good point uh, time to move on to the next point in the agenda so yes and then with this role again it's always good to sort of rotate roles so it stops any sort of um, conscious or subconscious accumulation of power and it ensures that um, skills are distributed, at skills and positions are distributed fairly um, amongst the group and minimises the risk of any sort of coercion or oppression within your group. Um, facilitators, that's the main role that I'll be discussing. Yeah, I'll be discussing facilitators and minute takers. Um, Facilitators, their sort of role is, it, it's not like sort of maybe a chairman or anything. Uh, it, their goal is simply to, as the role suggests, is to facilitate. So they're not there to dictate whether or not um, a point is valid or to the point of the discussion. They're just there to um, follow through with the agenda and ensure that discussions are thing. And they're more sort of there to point things out as opposed to um, dictate. So for example, if um, the discussion starts going on a bit of a ch tangent, uh, the facilitator may, might say, okay, can we bring this back to the agenda? And if it's an interesting point, they might, for example, say, okay, we'll put this, th this isn't on the agenda, but we will we'll set this as an action point. I'll discuss those in a bit later. Um, an action, we'll set it as an action point, so this will be uh, discuss to uh, a part of the agenda of the next meeting or if we have like um, five minutes spare at the end of the meeting uh, after we've finished the agenda um, we'll discuss it then and then it might also be like um, uh, de-escalating situations or um, encouraging people who are shy to talk a bit more so um, for example uh, you might sort of ask people to just sort of clarify what they mean. So, um, for example, Tony might say, I don't, um, I think, um, 
a bike workshop would be dangerous. I, d I don't know why a bike workshop would be dangerous, but Tony has this concern. And the facilitator would be, oh, okay, uh, so Tony, why do you think that a... Fit? That sounds a bit questioning, but you just generally want to clarify so it's clear for everyone else who's attending and clear for the minute taker to make things. Like, you want to make sure, yeah, um, that things are kept open and not closed. When you're, you are facilitating, you should try to use language that is uncritical and not overly supportive. You should try to remain um, neutral in the discussions. So that's why it's also a good idea that if you're doing a, if the meeting, you're then discussing something that's quite important for you and you're going to have trouble remaining impartial, that's the word I was looking for. If you're going to have trouble remaining impartial, you, it might be a good idea to let someone else facilitate for that meeting and then do a meeting that's not going to have these problems, but try to remain impartial. So like, um, yeah, um, maybe sort of say like, if, if you, yeah, just sort of generally be supportive for everyone. Um, so like, for example, whenever someone says, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, whenever someone has a point, always sort of say, mm, um, it's interesting that you say that and stuff like that, just try to use impartial language, don't be like, that's a horrid idea, um, thing, and then, yeah, you always will also want to be fair in your dealings, so don't allow, if you told someone who's rambled on for five minutes to be quiet, don't then allow everyone else to ramble on for five minutes, or, uh, without also then telling them to be quiet, and then, don't, I sort of said maybe your roles to, encourage people to speak um but don't force anyone so sort of you might want to say you might for example if everyone's sticking their hands up and you're going through these points but you've noticed that someone's not had the opportunity to speak or might be a bit shy it might be a good idea to sort of ask for their thoughts on it and uh yeah it, it'll be pretty obvious i think if they don't then want to speak like for example they'll sort of say like uh yeah uh, like, for example, to, if Tony's been a bit quiet, you might sort of say, I don't know why I'm using the name Tony as an example, but it works. Um, so, yeah, to, uh, so Tony, what do you think of such and such? And if that might give Tony then an, op uh, an opportunity to feel more confident and then to explain his views on such and such. Or if he just does not want to talk, he might sort of say, oh, yeah, I think it's good. Or, uh, yeah, don't, don't, don't force anyone is what I'm saying. Just try to be welcoming. Um... When you are facilitating, you'll, uh, yeah, as I said, keep things to the agenda, move things that are coming up onto either different points later in the meeting or as points to be raised um, on the next agenda. Um, and then keep track of hands and whose turn it is to speak. So, yeah, make sure it's always fair. So, like, the first person to raise their hand should get the next point, so... But, and then, like I said, like, maybe direct points should take priority over points, and maybe technical points, so that would be, like, um, I need to leave for fi five minutes to use the toilet, or, um, we've run out of tea, <laughs> um, uh, maybe they then have some sort of priority over other points as well, but that's up for you and your group to decide based on the situation. Um, yeah. Uh, so that was just a brief overview of a facilitator's role. Probably in this, um, in the description of this, I will put the um, consensus handbook by Seeds for Change, and they'll sort of explain meetings um, in more sort of uh, an expansive and uh, useful. Um, sort of way, but this is just sort of a quick digestible video on having effective meetings, yay! Um, so yeah, finally I want to talk about minute taker, the role of the minute taker, and um, keeping minutes. The design of minutes I'm quite fond of is rolling minutes, which is instead of just having separate documents for each minute, you have one big long rolling minute which sort of displays each meeting in its turn. The advantage of rolling minutes are that, for example, if you're having a lot of open meetings or like a group that's inviting lots of new members, uh, 
it allows them to sort of see the past of the group and know what to fit in and what uh, what's been done in the past and what dis discussions have been had in the past. But it also allows you to sort of note for the, everyone in the group, regardless if they're old or new members, to um, see and record the progression of a discussion and the sort of development of ideas within the group. Um, if you're going to keep rolling minutes, it's a good idea to have it online so it can be accessible. Um, yeah, I should note that rolling minutes are probably not suitable for all situations, and you should always use sort of your own judgment as a group. So, like, for example, if you're doing things that need to be more covert, rolling minutes might not be suitable there. But, um, yes, um, if you're having a generally more accessible sort of open f f group, or a group that does not need to be covert, uh, rolling minutes can be very helpful. Um, if you keep them online, they'll be accessible, though you should be careful about what you're sort of using. Like, for example, Google Documents or Google Docs um, is not very secure, um, and people can... It, it can be accessed if people want to access it quite easily, even if you did not want that person to access it. So you should probably use something um, encrypted. What I'm using and what you can see on the screen and what has sort of been on the screen now where I'm uh, sort of just been uh, messing around and talking for a bit before actually I'm showing anything. But um, this is a rolling uh, crypt pad and this is encrypted and it just means it's a bit more secure. So it's better for privacy and confidentiality and just keeping people safe. Though always be clear that even when it's encrypted it doesn't mean it's invincible so don't go like writing anything that was overly incriminating and to still take proper precautions for um, being um, safe and secure. So this was actually um, a template that I saved and I used it as an example for another local group. So we have rolling minutes here, so it just makes it clear it's rolling minutes. That's probably not the most important. And then this was a little section for the name of the group. So we might call it, in our little made-up group, will be the super, super radical leftist action group. There we go. And that's our little made-up group. And then this sort of, by here it just sort of, I made a little example, so it has the meeting example, use the number of the meeting and the date. The agenda points, uh, list of attendees, who's facilitating, who's the minute taker, uh, then on to the actual meetings, and then um, this sort of discusses, uh, yeah, so the, yeah, the agenda's sort of, uh, yeah. So this is an example, underline titles, use the increase indent tool to separate some notes, use the decrease indent tool to start a new subjection or to rejoin previous section, bullet point tools for lists. So that's just formatting advice. And then, so yeah, after the minutes, you will then have the action points and that, I'll explain this. This is an empty sort of template, which you can then just sort of copy and paste and then you use an insert horizontal line to separate this, so that's that thing by there. Um, yeah. If you're not too worried about security at all and you do use Google Docs, it's a lot easier to format, but... Um, did that work? I don't think it did. No, I copied and pasted it up there. That was smart of me. I'll see if it... no. Alright, I'm not going to fuss around trying to get this to work. It does work normally. This isn't the best example. Alright, okay, we'll, we'll keep our meetings up here, I guess, above the everything. It should be going below. It's not going below. It should be easy enough to figure out, but I, I, I don't want to mess around with it in this f instead of doing videos. So yeah, keeping minutes uh, I'll just sort of talk you maybe through the process and we might go through like a little imaginary meeting. So yeah, we'll say this is the first meeting. It's an open meeting um, of a of the super radical leftist action group. And it sort of says, uh, 
yeah, and we'll say it's taking place today, so that's the 22nd of the 10th, 2019. Uh, the points on the agenda uh, were um, introductions, Okay, it's not letting me not underline it, which is a bit silly, but we won't, it's not too important. And we'll say, yeah, we'll say it's an hour long last, uh, meeting, so we'll say, because uh, it's the first meeting, we want a generally, we might like do a longer introduction where maybe the person who started the initiative to start up the meeting and stuff will discuss the plans, and then it gives time to sort of know names and generally socialize for a bit. Then we'll have a uh, plan ideas for action for actions, and we'll say that should be about 20 minutes. Then halfway through, we'll have short break for socialization for so socializing. Five minutes, and then, um, and then, uh, yeah, and then we'll sort of forming, deciding on proposals. in the remaining 25 minutes. So yeah, this is, might not be the most efficient agenda, but sort of the idea is everyone comes in, they talk, they have a nice little introductions, then they raise their ideas, uh, everyone takes a short little break to clear their heads and maybe socialise a bit and get to know, and then they'll sort of all decide upon proposals. Um, yes. Uh, the consensus handbook will sort of talk upon about sort of making decisions. Uh, it does talk about making decisions through consensus and touches does also discusses a uh, direct majority voting and stuff like that. And I think that's a really good resource. And I might make another video in which I will discuss these things. But for this video, I think I'm just going to go through more so the process of having a meeting as opposed to making decisions. So I'm not going to really go into that. In the attendees section, the reason uh, this, yeah, like I said, I'm sort of showing you how to make a meeting. So you have the agenda there to remind you of everything. The time taken, that's more for the facility to, to care about. And you, it's not really your place to sort of say, oh, this is taking too long. Though if the facilitator asks, it might be. It can always be helpful, and who does what will vary from group to group, and yes. Um, right, anyway, now we're on the uh, attendees section of the minutes, and I'll explain why we have this. We have this simply so we know who was there, which can be good for sort of reasons of accountability, um, and it also then gives you the nice little list of names for when you get onto action points, which I'll discuss once we get onto the action points sort of bit, which will first actually be discussed in the minute section. But um, with this, you still kind of want to keep some degree of confidentiality. So I'd recommend you keep it to um, maybe just first names. So instead of sort of saying um, David Jones, you would just have David. So yeah, we'll sort of say we have David, Keith, Tony, Rebecca, I'm doing the most generic names possible. Jessica. Um, yeah. And then et cetera. You wouldn't actually write et cetera. That's just me. Because I don't want to meet names. And then sometimes you might be lucky in just a small... You might say who's facilitating. So maybe Rebecca's the facilitator. And um, Keith is taking minutes. Keeping notes of these roles, it can be useful. Again, especially in rolling minutes where you sort of see all the meetings. That way you can know, for example, maybe Keith's always being the minute taker. So it might be a good idea to sort of say, oh, at the next meeting, we'll let David be the um, 
minute taker or whoever else really so it lets you know if keith's always being minute taker and then or um for example you might see oh jessica she hasn't been the minute taker or the facilitator in ages so next meeting she should probably take one of these roles to ensure that responsibilities and um positions of potential power are being distributed and rotated frequently and fairly um and then you would also maybe add any other sort of roles. So you might say, like we said, it's a big open meeting. So maybe you have a vibe checker and you'd have, uh, yeah, maybe Tony, Tony's being the vibe checker. So yeah, just add and delete where applicable, I suppose. Now, when you're actually taking minutes, you don't want, uh, although I said it's good to have names for accountability, unless you really need a name to be accountable, you don't need to sort of, have that name. So in the first bit we're sort of just discussing the introductions. So we'd sort of say maybe yeah. You might introductions might not that be important, so it might sort of say this group will be doing direct action um yeah, maybe. Uh, and then it's looking for ideas and volunteers. Um, and then you can, yeah, if there's sub points, uh, you can then sort of start maybe bullet point list for this sort of discussion and then it might be said um what uh what yeah, and you would raise anyone's questions or their pros and cons. maybe what is direct action and then um are we going to be doing lots or focusing on one things one thing um and then we'll sort of go we'll where did that go oh yes we'll press increase indent again to sort of respond to those points so like direct action is uh We'll decide when we decide on proposals, or maybe uh, might be better instead of using we'll to, if it was a group decision that the group decided to decide when it decides. on proposals. There we go. And then to sort of, you'd space that out and then might undo that and then uh, decrease indent to then go back to typing up the next sort of section. So that would be like ideas for action. So again, that would be increase indent um bike workshop and then this is uh yeah and then instead of again sort of using uh sort of tony said you would uh i did something then i don't know what i did but oh i swapped accidentally swapped my keyboard Apologies. Um, Tony said that you would not sort of say, Tony said that you would say, um, yeah, you'd just sort of say the point or it was, it was said or just not even saying it was said and just sort of say, 
spikes could be dangerous and then respond to each sort of point directly. So if it's a direct response to that, it would then come under here and then sort of be maybe group disagreed um, bikes good for health. And then if it's not directly related to that point, like for example, like um, my uh, uh, and this would be something where it's then necessary to sort of say their name. We might say Jessica, Jessica's neighbor has work shop we could use. You don't need to worry about grammar because, like I said, people will be talking as you do this, so it can be a good idea to shorthand these things. And it, if you really want more formal things, like later, you can sort of then polish it up. Just always make sure that the group is comfortable with what you're writing and thinks that it accurately uh, represents the thing. Now we'll sort of maybe talk about action groups and sort of thing, like... Uh, this might not be the point at which it was raised in the discussion, but I don't think we should really then go for um, uh, the whole thing. But maybe then, as the direct response to that, we'd set an action point. And to highlight it as an action point, we'd put it in bold so it's noticeable. And then we'd include their name so it keeps the person accountable. And uh, we'd sort of say, Jessica to ask her neighbour if we can use their workshop and then that's the thing is where action points that then make sure what the meeting has decided will be done and it makes sure that the person who decide who says that they'll do it will do it it keeps everything accountable and it makes sure things gets done and then what you then do with the action points is you would then might you might um uh, it's good to have it listed at the end so you would copy that and then you would do this after the thing when you're just finishing up the minutes not in the middle of the discussion but you would then set that there so jessica to ask if we can use their workshop ask her neighbor if we can use their workshop and then that just sort of makes it known what has been decided will be done to make sure that that will actually be done because Often people will be like, oh, I don't remember agreeing to do that. Or I thought Tim said he was going to do that and such and such. And then, yes, like I said, at the end of every meeting, show everyone the minutes to make sure they are actually happy. So that way people can't, Jessica can't then be like, if Jessica didn't actually say she was going to ask her neighbour, she can then have the opportunity to say, well, I didn't say that. So that way you can sort of say, oh, that's fair enough then. So we'll sort of cancel that action point like that but yeah always respect people's confidentiality so if someone says like um a uh, thing like sometimes maybe jessica wouldn't be happy with a name being used but if you make clear that jessica is x you could say x and list them like that maybe but it should always be clear who sort of decided to do what and thing. But always trust your comrades in your meetings and stuff. You don't need to be too zealous about it. I think that's actually all I need to really discuss in regards, in regards to minutes, I suppose. And I think I've sort of discussed meetings. Maybe I'll do another video as sort of a follow-up to this one where I will then sort of discuss... Um, the processes of decision making and when you should use consensus, when you should use um, majoritarian voting, and uh, yes, I'll discuss that. Where it's always maybe a good idea to sort of at the end of a meeting, like I said, to go over certain things. So um, yeah, use any spare time that you had to go over things. Maybe that 
were the tangents that the group started thing that the facilitator had to steer the conversation away from back to the points on the agenda and um maybe to get a final vibe check so, so everyone talks about how this meeting made them felt may maybe or if there's anything that could be done better next time uh and then also maybe to show the minutes uh, or at least what notes have been taken down for the minutes so everyone f knows that they're comfortable with the decisions that have been decided upon and what action points they've agreed to do and whether they think it's represented properly representative of, of what has actually occurred at this meeting. But yes, I believe that's all for now. Um, and then, yes, I'll see if um, I can then make the nice little video about um, the actual process of decision making. So that should be either next Wednesday, uh, tomorrow, or um, on Sunday, or it could be later than that. But um, yes, thank you for watching, and I hope that you have a nice and pleasant day and effective meetings. Thank you.